Coming up on Lexington Now, 20 years of the Citizen Police Academy, safety for pedestrians, and government television has a new home. This and more up next on this week's edition of Lexington Now. Sherelle Roberts and welcome to another edition of Lexington Now where we give you an inside look at what's going on around the urban county government. Lexington Citizen Police Academy is celebrating 20 years of bringing law enforcement and citizens together through education and engagement. And through the efforts of the Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association, hundreds of people know more about the police department. Here's more on the celebration. I was uh, fortunate enough to kind of come into the, uh, the academy behind uh, Officer Debbie Wagner. Uh, she was pretty much the mentor that planted the seed that kind of came up with the idea back in 97 when it actually got started uh, to kind of provide a uh, opportunity for the citizens of Lexington uh, to come in and take a view of your police department. You can come in and kind of watch uh, exactly what the uh, police recruits go through. Uh, you can see how they're trained. You can talk to the training staff, you know, the theories behind why we do what we do and giving them a chance to kind of make up their own minds. It's really education is really what it's all about versus kind of having someone else kind of dictate, you know, your thoughts and uh, processes about uh, police work and why did he or she make a decision to do it like that. If you kind of come in and you spend a little bit of time vested, it's free. We just do it one night a week, about three hours. Usually have a meal before we get started, have a qualified instructor come in. Get all your questions answered. A lot of it's hands-on. So a big part of it's lecture as well. But uh, it just really doesn't make sense not to take that opportunity to kind of come in and take a look at the, I guess, the legal authority there in your community and what you can expect them them to be doing. You know, it's uh, if you have a question about, okay, why is there one police officer out on that stop? Why is there three or four out on this one? Just uh, commonly asked questions that uh, you can take get taken care of, and you can kind of get your own mind. Uh, I guess around you know what, what exactly it is that we do be educated and share it with others that's really what it's about it's a simple concept but uh, obviously if you're the authority in your community your people should have the opportunity to come in and see what you do and why you're doing it we have a model back the blue and that's what we do we back the blue in many different many different ways um, and, and we we teach that after I graduated from the Academy that's when I said that the Alumni Association is just one step further. You can go ahead and get involved and more hands-on with more activities, um, doing different scenarios for them. And um, it's just very, very interesting. And you learn so much by doing that that you have a lot better appreciation for what the police have to go through on an everyday basis. Talk to my friends, talk to the public, and let them know that the police really are not against the public. They're there to help us, and um, they're, they're just all around great people. We want to be the spokesperson for them, for the average citizen out on the street. Um, to me, that's a privilege to get to know the officers. They're just like anybody else. They're like us. Um, they want to go to work, go home in the evening, spend time with their family, and so forth like that. And that's what we try to, try to um, portray that the officers are. And if you need help, don't be afraid to go up and talk to them. They're more than willing to talk to anybody, anytime, any place. Well, the Citizens Police Academy is one of the most important things we do here in Lexington because it brings the opportunity for people in our community to learn about our agency and learn about the officers, which I think are the most tremendous asset that our agency has. And once you join the Citizens Police Academy, they continue it on with our Alumni Association. That Alumni Association provides support, not only financially, but also to the officers every day when they're out working. They oftentimes get to be able to say things that we're unable to say or talking to the community to express concerns or be able to say, I understand why that happened or occurred because I went through the Citizens Police Academy. Uh, we receive tremendous support from them. And right now, to be recognized like they have four times nationally 
as a Citizens Police Academy as a national standard for the country. I think that's a tremendous asset for not only Lexington, our community, but also speaks well of our Citizens Police Academy and their leadership. So we're grateful for all they do. Uh, they do a tremendous amount of work in our community. They do a tremendous amount of work for our officers, and they're always out trying to help and seek and help other people. It's been such a tremendous success since beginning in 1997. I think uh, what they've been able to accomplish has exceeded all of our wildest imagination and dreams. Uh, they, have, they have actually changed the culture of our police department. When I came on the police department in 1990, 1984, the culture was that you didn't bring your families around other police officers. We didn't have events to celebrate things and it really wasn't a, a healthy environment from that perspective. The CPA has encouraged uh, supportive officers by holding family events and have actually really gone above and beyond. And now you go to events and you see officers who feel very comfortable bringing their kids and their families and sharing with other officers and it's just a very healthy environment. And I attribute that to the efforts of the folks in the CPA and the Alumni Association. They have uh, they've done so many things, and they, they obviously they've done it well. They've won every award at the national level that is given to CPA alumni associations. They won the, the national chapter of the year three times. No other department or chapter has ever done that. We won coordinator of the year, most supportive agency of the year. We've swept all the awards that are given at the national level for this effort, and it's just certainly a, a great tribute to the people who've been involved in and given their time and talents and efforts. I've had the pleasure of working with uh, the Citizens Police Academy uh, every year. Uh, this is a fantastic organization. So if you haven't been in it and you have an interest in learning about our police department, please do this. The, this, this particular academy in Lexington has received several national awards as being the best in the country. And the, the citizens who get to come learn every aspect of the criminal justice system. I've had the chance to be able to talk to them about what I do and what our office does. So I would encourage you, if you have an interest in learning a little bit more about what we do in Lexington with the police department and the criminal justice system, join up. The community um, learns about the police department and when individuals participate in the Citizens Police Academy, they learn what an officer does every day. It's been my experience, they develop a pretty good respect for what the police department does. And they go back into the community and they share that with their friends. So in, in this, a city like the size of Lexington, we're just not so big that every citizen shouldn't know or should know a police officer, that there should be a relationship between one another. And I think that the better the relationships are, the better job the police department does in this community. The Citizens Police Academy is also fun. I mean, I've had the pleasure of being there, uh, talking to them. They have a great time. It's a diverse, varied group of people. They have uh, come from very different backgrounds, um, all kinds of backgrounds, and they get to share with one another their own experiences with law enforcement, and sometimes they have very different experiences with law enforcement. But in the sharing, again, I think that um, respect and understanding is developed and the more that we know each other, the more we respect and understand one another, the better place Lexington is to live. Goodness, I can't believe, and I hate to admit it's been 20 years, but thank you all for all that you've done, all you continue to do. You're the best. Congratulations on 20 years of success here in Lexington. I remember when it first started off, people were skeptical, and it's probably the best thing our agency has done. And especially the last two and a half, three years that the country has seen, it's probably one of the most community-involved programs that we have. So congratulations on 20 great positive years for Lexington Citizens Police Academy. For more information about the Citizen Police Academy and the celebration of 20 years, you can visit the city's website. It's LexingtonKY.gov. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you how to stay safe while you're walking downtown.
to the show. Lexington, like any busy metropolitan area, has many pedestrians on the streets at all hours of the day and night. And too often, those pedestrians aren't paying enough attention to their surroundings, which can be a danger to them and to motorists. Here are some tips on how to safely navigate our busy streets if you're a pedestrian. Hi, I'm Officer Howard Florence. As kids, we're taught about safe ways to cross the street, but it's important that everyone practice pedestrian safety. The City of Lexington has a specific law about pedestrians crossing busy roadways. These roads, such as New Circle, Man o' War, Shinoe, and Third Street, are the busiest in Lexington, altogether averaging more than two million vehicles each day. The goal is to keep you safe. Cross roads in a crosswalk. Where there is no crosswalk, cross at an intersection. Other than when crossing a busy street, do not stand or walk in the roadway or on a median. Never approach a vehicle that's moving or stopped in traffic. 
Nationwide, there has been an increase in recent years of collisions involving pedestrians. In 2016, pedestrians accounted for one-fifth of car crash fatalities in Lexington. Let's walk, bike, and drive with more awareness. For more information, check out the Safe Streets page on the city's website, lexingtonky.gov. We've shared this information with you over the last few weeks, but as this time of adjustment continues, we wanted to let you know again that some big changes have happened for government television. After 27 years on Channel 3, we've made the move up the dial to Channel 185. And along with the change in location has come the change from GTV3 to Lex TV. Chris Edwards of Lex TV fills us in on what the changes mean for you. The transition from GTV3 on cable channel 3 to Lex TV on channel 185, the content will stay the same. We're still going to be televising over 400 hours of live meeting coverage every year. Uh, that's really the backbone of why Lex TV exists, is to televise meetings, to bring that meeting, that government meeting from the council chamber in the government center to a citizen's home so they can be up to, up to speed, up to date on what their, their council members uh, are discussing and how they're voting. Alongside that, we also do another 300 hours or so of original programming every year. Programming for parks, programming for council members, programming for environmental quality. We do a weekly news program. All that's going to stay the same as well. We're not changing any of our programming. We're just changing the channel number from 3 to channel 185. The second transition is converting the station from a standard definition studio to a high definition studio. Behind me is a new control room we installed back in January. We have installed some other new high definition equipment. So when Spectrum allows us to have a high definition channel, all we have to do is unplug one cable and plug in another and we'll be high definition on Spectrum cable. I think it's important to be high definition because of the information that's coming across to the citizens. Not all of it is through word of mouth. A lot of times during uh, council committee meetings and planning commission meetings, there's a lot of PowerPoint type of information, a lot of text information that's coming across. And when you put a standard definition signal into a high definition television, it gets kind of blurry. So I think it's very important for that and other reasons that the station become high definition on spectrum. To find the program schedule, when meetings are gonna air and when some of our original programming is gonna air, citizens can go to www.lexingtonky.gov forward slash Lex TV. And that will take them right to our landing page. You can, from that point, you can access the live streaming, which we do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also access the archived videos of meetings from the past. We have a YouTube channel as well. Lex TV's YouTube channel is Lex TV. And what we put on the Lex TV YouTube channel is programming that uh, we produce uh, in-house. We also have a new high definition, uh, what we call fly package. And this is basically a portable studio that allows us to go out into the field and produce high definition programming uh, for air and for the web. And recently we started doing Dirt Bowl basketball games. The Dirt Bowl is a long tradition in Lexington of these basketball games in Douglas Park. Well, recently we started televising those games. And this equipment, this new fly package equipment that we have, which is basically a smaller version of what's behind me, allows us to go out and do that. This is a big event for parks, and I love that we could support parks with this event. And um, so we're really excited about the things that we're going to do in the future at Lex TV. Uh, I'm always excited the things that we can do uh, with the equipment that we're allowed to have and the staff that we have. Bigger and better things are coming. Uh, one of the things I'm looking forward to in the near future will be virtual sets in our studio. Uh, right now, we have a fixed set. And in the very near future, what this equipment here will allow us to do uh, will be to have virtual sets. And that's what's going to get people's attention. That's what's going to make them want to stop and go, what is this? This is interesting looking. 
and then if you catch them with the eye, you can give them the information that they need. For more information, you can visit LexingtonKY.gov slash LexTV. Well, it's going to be a very busy week, so that means there are going to be plenty of televised meetings on LexTV, including the Environmental Quality and Public Works meeting and the Council Work Session on Tuesday, the Board of Architectural Review on Wednesday, the Planning Commission and Public Comments on Spectrum meeting on Thursday, the Board of Adjustment meeting on Friday. Now, you can catch all of these meetings live as well as our other programming on Lex TV channel 185 or online at lexingtonky.gov slash Lex TV. And again, if that was too many meetings for you to keep up with, you can always go to our website and check them out. Well, that's all for this week's edition of Lexington Now. We'll return next week with more news from the Urban County Government. But in the meantime, you can keep up with what we're doing by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also get 24-7 traffic updates by following us on Twitter. Our handle for that is at LexRex. Or if you're one of those folks who likes to see exactly what's going on, you can check out our live interactive cameras. They're on the city's website, too. You know where to find us, LexingtonKY.gov. For the staff and producers at Lex TV, I'm Sherelle Roberts, and that's it for now.